Alceus of Mytilene, Ancient Greek, Alkaios ho Mytilenaios, Alkaios ho Mytilenaios, c. 626 century BC, was a lyric poet from the Greek island of Lesbos who is credited with inventing the Alcaic stanza. He was included in the canonical list of nine lyric poets by the scholars of Hellenistic Alexandria. He was an older contemporary and an alleged lover of Sappho, with whom he may have exchanged poems. He was born into the aristocratic governing class of Mytilene, the main city of Lesbos, where he was involved in political disputes and feuds. Biography <inaudible> 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 The broad outlines of the poet's life are well known. He was born into the aristocratic, warrior class that dominated Mytilene, the strongest city-state on the island of Lesbos and, by the end of the 7th century BC, the most influential of all the North Aegean Greek cities, with a strong navy and colonies securing its trade routes in the Hellespont. The city had long been ruled by kings born to the Pendelid clan but, during the poet's life, the Pendelids were a spent force and rival aristocrats and their factions contended with each other for supreme power. Alcius and his older brothers were passionately involved in the struggle but experienced little success. Their political adventures can be understood in terms of three tyrants who came and went in succession. Melanchris, he was overthrown sometime between 612 BC and 609 BC by a faction that, in addition to the brothers of Alcius, included Pittacus later renowned as one of the seven sages of Greece. Alcius at that time was too young to be actively involved. Merciless, it is not known when he came to power but some verses by Alcius frag, 129, indicate that the poet, his brothers and Pittacus made plans to overthrow him and that Pittacus subsequently betrayed them. Alcius and his brothers fled into exile where the poet later wrote a drinking song in celebration of the news of the tyrant's death frag, 332. Pittacus, the dominant political figure of his time, he was voted supreme power by the political assembly of Mytilene and appears to have governed well 590-580 BC, even allowing Alcius and his faction to return home in peace. Sometime before 600 BC, Mytilene fought Athens for control of Sigion and Alcius was old enough to participate in the fighting. According to the historian Herodotus, the poet threw away his shield to make good his escape from the victorious Athenians then celebrated the occasion in a poem that he later sent to his friend, Melanippus. It is thought that Alcius travelled widely during his years in exile, including at least one visit to Egypt. His older brother, Antimenides, appears to have served as a mercenary in the army of Nebuchadnezzar II and probably took part in the conquest of Ascalon. Alcius wrote verses in celebration of Antimenida's return, including mention of his valor in slaying the larger opponent frag, 350, and he proudly describes the military hardware that adorned their family home frag, 357. Alcius was in some respects not unlike a royalist soldier of the age of the Stuarts. He had the high spirit and reckless gaiety, the love of country bound up with belief in a caste, the license tempered by generosity and sometimes by tenderness, of a cavalier who has seen good and evil days." Richard Claverhouse Jeb Alcius was a contemporary and a countryman of Sappho and, since both poets composed for the entertainment of Mytilenine friends, they had many opportunities to associate with each other on a quite regular basis, such as at the Calisteia, an annual festival celebrating the island's federation under Mytilene, held at the Messen referred to as Temenos in Frs. 129 and 130, where Sappho performed publicly with female choirs. Alcius' reference to Sappho in terms more typical of a divinity, as holy, pure, honey-smiling Sappho fr. may owe its inspiration to her performances at the festival. The lesbian or Aeolic school of poetry, "...reached in the songs of Sappho and Alcius that high point of brilliancy to which it never afterwards approached." And it was assumed by later Greek critics and during the early centuries of the Christian era that the two poets were in fact lovers, a theme which became a favorite subject in art as in the urn pictured above. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Poetry. 
The poetic works of Alcius were collected into ten books, with elaborate commentaries, by the Alexandrian scholars Aristophanes of Byzantium and Aristarchus of Samothrace sometime in the 3rd century BC, and yet his verses today exist only in fragmentary form, varying in size from mere phrases, such as wine, window into a man fr. 333, to entire groups of verses and stanzas, such as those quoted below fr. 346. Alexandrian scholars numbered him in their canonic nine one lyric poet per muse. Among these, Pindar was held by many ancient critics to be preeminent, but some gave precedence to Alcius instead. The canonic nine are traditionally divided into two groups, with Alcius, Sappho and Anacreon, being monodists or solo singers, with the following characteristics. They composed and performed personally for friends and associates on topics of immediate interest to them. They wrote in their native dialects Alcius and Sappho in Aeolic dialect, Anacreon in Ionic. They preferred quite short, metrically simple stanzas or strophes which they reused in many poems. Hence the Alcaic and Sapphic stanzas, named after the two poets who perfected them or possibly invented them, the other six of the canonic nine composed verses for public occasions, performed by choruses and professional singers and typically featuring complex metrical arrangements that were never reproduced in other verses. However, this division into two groups is considered by some modern scholars to be too simplistic and often it is practically impossible to know whether a lyric composition was sung or recited, or whether or not it was accompanied by musical instruments and dance. Even the private reflections of Alcius, ostensibly sung at dinner parties, still retain a public function. Critics often seek to understand Alcius in comparison with Sappho. If we compare the two, we find that Alcius is versatile, Sappho narrow in her range, that his verse is less polished and less melodious than hers, and that the emotions which he chooses to display are less intense. David Campbell The Aeolian song is suddenly revealed, as a mature work of art, in the spirited stanzas of Alcius. It is raised to a supreme excellence by his younger contemporary, Sappho, whose melody is unsurpassed, perhaps unequaled, among all the relics of Greek verse. Richard Jebb in the variety of his subjects, in the exquisite rhythm of his meters, and in the faultless perfection of his style, all of which appear even in mutilated fragments, he excels all the poets, even his more intense, more delicate and more truly inspired contemporary Sappho. James Easby Smith The Roman poet, Horace, also compared the two, describing Alcius as more full-throatedly singing. See Horace's tribute below. Alcius himself seems to underscore the difference between his own down -to -earth style and Sappho's more celestial qualities when he describes her almost as a goddess as cited above, and yet it has been argued that both poets were concerned with a balance between the divine and the profane, each emphasizing different elements in that balance. Dionysus of Halicarnassus exhorts us to observe in Alcius the sublimity, brevity and sweetness coupled with stern power, his splendid figures, and his clearness which was unimpaired by the dialect, and above all mark his manner of expressing his sentiments on public affairs." While Quintilian, after commending Alcius for his excellence, in that part of his works where he inveighs against tyrants and contributes to good morals, in his language he is concise, exalted, careful and often like an orator goes on to add, but he descended into wantonness and amours, though better fitted for higher things. Poetic genres The works of Alcius are conventionally grouped according to five genres. Political songs, Alcius often composed on a political theme, covering the power struggles on Lesbos with the passion and vigor of a partisan, cursing his opponents, rejoicing in their deaths, delivering blood-curdling homilies on the consequences of political inaction and exhorting his comrades to heroic defiance, as in one of his «Ship of State» allegories. Commenting on Alcius as a political poet, the scholar Dionysus of Halicarnassus once observed that less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 if you removed the meter you would find political rhetoric drinking songs according to the grammarian athenius alcius made every occasion an excuse for drinking and he has provided posterity several quotes in proof of it alcius exhorts his friends to drink in celebration of a tyrant's death to drink away their sorrows to drink because life is short and along the lines in vino veritas to drink through winter storms and to drink through the heat of summer the latter poem in fact paraphrases verses from Hesiod, recasting them in a Slepiad meter and Aeolian dialect. 
Hymns, Alcius sang about the gods in the spirit of the Homeric hymns, to entertain his companions rather than to glorify the gods and in the same meters that he used for his secular lyrics. There are for example fragments in Sapphic meter praising the Dioscuri, Hermes and the river Hebrus a river significant in lesbian mythology since it was down its waters that the head of Orpheus was believed to have floated singing, eventually crossing the sea to Lesbos and ending up in a temple of Apollo, as a symbol of lesbian supremacy in song. According to Porphyrian, the hymn to Hermes was imitated by Horus in one of his own Sapphic odes C.1.10, Mercury, Fecund Nepos Atlantis. Love songs, almost all Alcius Amorous verses, mentioned with disapproval by Quintilian above, have vanished without trace. There is a brief reference to his love poetry in a passage by Cicero. Horace, who often wrote in imitation of Alcius, sketches in verse one of the lesbian poet's favorite subjects, Lycus of the Black Hair and Eyes C.1.32.11-12, Nigris Oculis Nigro, Crine Decorum. It is possible that Alcius wrote amorously about Sappho, as indicated in an earlier quote. Miscellaneous, Alcius wrote on such a wide variety of subjects and themes that contradictions in his character emerge. The grammarian Athenius quoted some verses about perfumed ointments to prove just how unwarlike Alcius could be and he quoted his description of the armor adorning the walls of his house as proof that he could be unusually warlike for a lyric poet. Other examples of his readiness for both warlike and unwarlike subjects are lyrics celebrating his brother's heroic exploits as a Babylonian mercenary and lyrics sung in a rare meter sapphic ionic in, minor in the voice of a distressed girl, "'Wretched me, who share in all ills'", possibly imitated by Horace in an ode in the same meter C.3.12, Miserarum est necamori der ludum nec dolci. He also wrote sapphic stanzas on Homeric themes but in unhomeric style, comparing Helen of Troy unfavorably with Thetis, the mother of Achilles. <laughs> A Drinking Poem Fr. 346. The following verses demonstrate some key characteristics of the Alcaic style square brackets indicate uncertainties in the ancient text the Greek meter here is relatively simple, comprising the greater Asclepiad, adroitly used to convey, for example, the rhythm of jostling cups a delta, a The language of the poem is typically direct and concise and comprises short sentences. The first line is in fact a model of condensed meaning, comprising an exhortation. Let's drink, a rhetorical question. Why are we waiting for the lamps? and a justifying statement only an inch of daylight left, the meaning is clear and uncomplicated, the subject is drawn from personal experience, and there is an absence of poetic ornament, such as simile or metaphor. Like many of his poems e FRS. 38, 326, 338, 347, 350, it begins with a verb in this case. Let's drink and it includes a proverbial expression, only an inch of daylight left though it is possible that he coined it himself. A hymn Fr. 34. Alcius rarely used metaphor or simile and yet he had a fondness for the allegory of the storm-tossed ship of state. The following fragment of a hymn to Castor and Polydeuces the Dioscuri is possibly another example of this though some scholars interpret it instead as a prayer for a safe voyage. The poem was written in sapphic stanzas, a verse form popularly associated with his compatriot, Sappho, but in which he too excelled, here paraphrased in English to suggest the same rhythms. There were probably another three stanzas in the original poem but only nine letters of them remain. The far away light below than Lamproi is a reference to St. Elmo's fire, an electrical discharge supposed by ancient Greek mariners to be an epiphany of the Dioscuri, but the meaning of the line was obscured by gaps in the papyrus until reconstructed by a modern scholar. Such reconstructions are typical of the extant poetry see scholars, fragments and sources below. This poem doesn't begin with a verb but with an adverb dute, but still communicates a sense of action. He probably performed his verses at drinking parties for friends and political allies—men for whom loyalty was essential, particularly in such troubled times. Tributes from other poets Horace 
The Roman poet Horace modeled his own lyrical compositions on those of Alcius, rendering the lesbian poet's verse forms, including Alcaic and Sapphic stanzas, into concise Latin an achievement he celebrates in his third book of odes. In his second book, in an ode composed in Alcaic stanzas on the subject of an almost fatal accident he had on his farm, he imagines meeting Alcius and Sappho in Hades. Topic. Ovid Ovid compared Alcius to Sappho in Letters of the Heroines, where Sappho is imagined to speak as follows. Topic. Scholars, fragments and sources The story of Alcius is partly the story of the scholars who rescued his work from oblivion. His verses have not come down to us through a manuscript tradition. Generations of scribes copying an author's collected works, such as delivered intact into the modern age four entire books of Pindar's odes, but haphazardly, in quotes from ancient scholars and commentators whose own works have chanced to survive, and in the tattered remnants of papyri uncovered from an ancient rubbish pile at Oxyrhynchus and other locations in Egypt, sources that modern scholars have studied and correlated exhaustively, adding little by little to the world's store of poetic fragments. Ancient scholars quoted Alcius in support of various arguments. Thus for example Heraclitus the Allegorist quoted Fr. 326 and part of Fr. 6, about ships in a storm, in his study on Homer's use of allegory. The hymn to Hermes, Fr. 308 b, was quoted by Hephaestion grammarian, and both he and Libanius, the rhetorician, quoted the first two lines of Fr. 350, celebrating the return from Babylon of Alcius' brother. The rest of Fr. 350 was paraphrased in prose by the historian, geographer Strabo. Many fragments were supplied in quotes by Athenius, principally on the subject of wine drinking, but Fr. 333, "'Wine, window into a man' was quoted much later by the Byzantine grammarian, John Zetzes. The first modern publication of Alcius verses appeared in a Greek and Latin edition of fragments collected from the canonic Nine Lyrical Poets by Michael Neander, published at Ball in 1556. This was followed by another edition of the Nine Poets, collected by Henricus Stephanus and published in Paris in 1560. Fulvius Ursinus compiled a fuller collection of Alcaic fragments, including a commentary, which was published at Antwerp in 1568. The first separate edition of Alcius was by Christian David Yanni and it was published at Halle in 1780. The next separate edition was by August Mathia, Leipzig 1827. Some of the fragments quoted by ancient scholars were able to be integrated by scholars in the 19th century. Thus for example two separate quotes by Athenius were united by Theodor Berg to form Fr. 362. Three separate sources were combined to form Fr. 350, as mentioned above, including a prose paraphrase from Strabo that first needed to be restored to its original meter, a synthesis achieved by the united efforts of Otto Hoffmann, Karl Ottfried Müller and Franz Heinrich Ludolf Ahrens. The discovery of the Oxyrhynchus papyri towards the end of the 19th century dramatically increased the scope of scholarly research. In fact, eight important fragments have now been compiled from papyri FRS. 9, 38a, 42, 45, 34, 129, 130 and most recently S262. These fragments typically feature lacunae or gaps that scholars fill with educated guesses, including for example a brilliant supplement by Maurice Bora in Fr. 34, a hymn to the Dioscuri that includes a description of St. Elmo's fire in the ship's rigging. Working with only eight letters, pro ter tes tr, pro less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 tr less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 tes, Bora conjured up a phrase that brilliantly develops the meaning and the euphony of the poem, proton entrechantes tr. Proton entrechantes, describing luminescence, running along the forest days. Topic. References Topic. Sources Sappho et Alcius. Fragmenta. Eva Maria Voigt, ed. Polak and Van Hennep, Amsterdam, 1971. Greek Lyric Poetry. D. A. Campbell, ed. 
Bristol Classical Press, London, 1982. ISBN 978-0-86292-008-1 Greek Lyric 1, Sappho and Alcius. D. A. Campbell, ed. Harvard University Press, Cambridge, Massachusetts, 1982. ISBN 978-0-674-99157-6 Alcée. Fragments. Gautier Liberman, ed. Collection Budet, Paris, 1999. ISBN 978-2-251-00476-1 Sappho and the Greek Lyric Poets. Translated by Willis Barnstone. Shokin Books Inc., New York, 1988. ISBN 978-0-8052-0831-3 External links Works written by or about Alcius of Mytilene at Wikisource Works by or about Alcius of Mytilene at Internet Archive Works by Alcius of Mytilene at LibriVox Public Domain Audiobooks Poems by Alcius, English translations A. M. Miller, Greek Lyric, Alcius, Many Fragments Alcius Bilingual Anthology in Greek and English, side by side